Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I bring you guys awesome, awesome interviews. And today it is an honor and the utmost privilege to have this guy on the show. His name is Postalus Maximus, the lead guitarist of Guar. They have their 14th studio album getting ready to come out October the 20th, entitled The Blood of Gods, out on Metal Blade Records. And like I said, this is a huge honor to have him on here. I've been a huge fan of Guar for a very, very long time. So, Postalus, how are you doing, my man? Terrible, as always. <laughs> I know, it's a sick, sick world that we live in, my friend. What's impressed you the most about making the new album, The Blood of Gods? What's caught your eye about it, if anything, possibly? What's impressed me the most? I mean, how great that we can we can do. The great music we make. I never cease to impress myself with my greatness. <laughs> but, you know, it, honestly, uh, you know, I'm, we're really proud of this record and proud of everything we've accomplished on it. And uh, I'm glad we were able to give the band a shot in the arm, so to speak. New lead singer Blothar, what has he brought to the Mighty Guar after joining as a lead vocalist? A laundry list of complaints <laughs> is what he's brought since he's been, you know, part of the band. It, you know, it never stops with this guy. But, you know, uh, Blothar, for those that don't know, you know, joined the band when we were in a desperate time of need for some <laughs> guidance and uh, after we lost Odorous Urungus. Right. And um, it's helped us immensely. Uh, it was, it was, you know, he's got kind of a familiar face and I don't think that we would have been very successful if we would have gotten somebody, uh, I guess we weren't as familiar with to be in the group, even like myself when, you know, Flatus Maximus departed the earth, you know, we we're cousins from distant planets. So, I mean, it, it made sense for them to pick, you know, for me to, to, to join the band rather than some stranger. And Zach Wild was busy too. <laughs> yeah, Zach was busy. <laughs> uh, are there any songs off the new album that stand out more to you on it than any as of right now, possibly? Well, you know, uh, there's albums that I've played on before where, you know, I'm definitely excited about certain tracks more than others. But, you know, this one, I'm, I'm pretty partial to all of it, mainly just because I feel like we, we didn't just play, you know, it's not just 10 thrash metal songs or it's not just 10 rock songs you know they're it's diverse there's a there's heavy metal songs there's there's a song with a blast beat in there there's a song that sounds like slayer and there's a lot of like rock and roll influence on this one and it definitely shows i mean i think i think el presidente is probably the most accurate representation of the new band sounding like guar should sound mm -hmm. because let's face it you know the the incarnation of the band as it stands now is different than what it was two years ago three years ago five ten years ago True. you know and uh something that you can be sure of with guar is that we're always going to be evolving after you guys lost odorous you know that was tremendous tremendous huge loss for you guys um one i mean you guys are one of the greatest rock bands theatrical wise and rock and roll wise still today in my book so i mean i just still thank you guys for what you guys are doing right now still the blood of gods is the first gore album without odorous the title of this album refers to the loss of odor so let's talk about this a bit is this kind of like a, a tribute album to him and the direction that guar wants to go into possibly I mean, I wouldn't exactly call it a tribute album. I mean, because that's kind of that's kind of selling it short of of what we're capable of. You know, um, I mean, as much as I as we all miss Odorous Urungus, the the album is basically a testament to what's happened to us. You know, we're the surviving members. We're the ones that have had to go through the rejection and uh, the humanity turning their backs on us and going against us. And uh, what it's like, you know, to be corporate sellouts and a world without one of your best friends in it. That was very important to what we do. But, you know, we, this is all we've done our entire lives. So that it, that's why his loss is an impact. But I don't want to take anything away from him, but that's not all we are, you right. know. Right. Bar as many parts that make up the whole. And uh, Odorous was, was the part that shined the brightest. Absolutely. And uh, he's, it, it, you know, he's irreplaceable. How much growth musically have you seen, you know, yourself and this band go through up to the release of this new album? Or has it just been more just a personal growth for each of you guys? 
Well, I mean, the only growths I've had are a bunch of genital warts uh, from <laughs> the last few, you know, people I took home to bed. Uh, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Uh, but, you know, musically, uh, we definitely had more time to explore and, and hear out each other's ideas than uh, maybe previous records where, uh, you know, Battle Maximus was... Uh, we did that record on shaky ground. We were desperate to be, sh to prove that we weren't going to falter. And, you know, it seems like we can't go an album cycle without losing somebody. And uh, we would, we didn't, I don't want to say that battle Maximus was a mistake, but we learned, we've learned from our past experiences, what not to do and uh, pushing something out. I mean, cause this record let's just face it, this is going to, this is going to be the make or break for the band. If it sucks, you know, we're going to become a legacy act and only play like best of shows. And then we'll be right up there with warrant and great white and fucking bullshit, shitty bands like that. And that's not going to happen, of course, but you know, that's why, you know, we, we weren't going to let ourselves put out a shitty record. At least not that shitty. <laughs> do you guys do anything differently during the writing and recording process to, to help keep your minds open and fresh and to not let the music get stale, if anything? Well, we got more people together. Uh, it's, we actually listened to each other. All the band members had more time to go through these songs as a unit rather than some of the previous works. You know, maybe certain members may not have been involved in one area of one song or another, but everybody had their hand in it the whole time which was good. You know, there was, you know, we let each other have room to breathe certain songs. The writer was given, you know, the ability to just run with an idea, you know, but I think the fact that it kind of, that everybody contributed made this one a lot more special in my opinion. So what do you hope the fans take away from this new album once they start to listen to it or just Guar's music in general? Well, they're going to, take it away they're gonna take it away from us i'm sure they're gonna steal it they're gonna steal it from russian tour inside just like i get all my records from so <laughs> but you know i i hope that they uh, you know you you can see at least you should see what you know what we're going through if you're not up to date on all your guar lore i think the lyrical content of this band reflects uh us a little deeper than what you may see at a show or by following us through social media. Cause it seems to be like, that's how most people get their news about artists. And for us, that's not, you know, we're, we're, we're songwriters. You know, so we're going to put it in the music. We're not going to, I don't know however else to get it out there. You know, folks, Gore is also known for their live show and it's one hell of a show, but, uh, Post a list for the ones that have not got to see you guys yet. And that's a damn shame. If you have it, what can I expect at a show from Gore? Well, you can expect to die at the show. You can expect to have blood spilled on you. You know, you can expect to see live sex acts on stage, bestiality, <laughs> killing, murder, rape, all, I mean, all the things that, you know, the grand old days of the Roman Coliseum may have had in it. So it's not too dissimilar from other forms of entertainment. I mean, you go pay to watch movies with, sex and violence in there so why not come and see it in a rock show yeah yeah the mighty guar <laughs> now we're living in this digital era of recording albums plus social media do you like this that we're living in right now to get music out quicker and, and plus to have fans to interact with you guys a lot more well i mean this uh, the social media thing it's i don't know man it's it's good and it's bad it's a double-edged sword i think uh humanity is struggling to come to grips and they're trying to cope with this technology. You know, it's kind of like giving a baby a rifle. You know, it's it can be a powerful tool, but it could also be fucking dangerous. You know, I think uh, society's culture is kind of what makes it what makes it shitty. You know, it's kind of because the, the concept of it is inanimate. It's what people do with it is what makes it what it is. And right now, it seems like not much actual news is shared other than everybody's got a fucking opinion about something. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Guar is here to tell you that nobody cares about your opinion. Yeah. You could post one little thing and you got 50 other people chiming in. Everybody wants to argue about shit. What they want to tell you what they're offended by. And quite frankly, we don't care. Support wise. Is there a country or a region that stands out, uh, more to you or surprises you that you guys get support from that area? 
No, I mean, uh, you know, our, our home base definitely is here in the United States. And uh, I'd say we get, I mean, we actually probably get more support in uh, Canada in Canadian cities than uh, United States. But then again, we've got more major cities here. So I think things are a little bit more spread out. But, you know, Toronto, I think, is where we probably have the best show of any tour, in my opinion. You've been with Guar for, like, since 2012, I believe. Is there any show or a moment that stands out more to you that you can recall being part of Guar? You know, it's kind of a hard question to ask. Most of the time, blacked out drunk half the time. Not really <laughs> many of them stand out. You know, I, it's a, when I come to think of it, no, nothing really. I mean... I think one of my favorite moments was when I grabbed some stage diver by his britches and threw him back in the crowd <laughs> in uh, Edmonton, Canada. That was pretty. That was pretty cool. What? You ever seen Uncle Phil throw Jazzy Jeff on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Yeah, that's yeah, exactly yeah. what it was like. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great. <laughs> oh man, what made you want to become a musician? What was that spark for you that said that? That's what I want to do. If anything, well, it did. Long line of bad decisions, really. <laughs> you know, I just, uh, I really wanted to travel amongst the cosmos, and I didn't want to have to uh, pay to do it. I wanted to get paid, and I wanted, and I didn't want to join the military. I've already gone AWOL from, you know, another military branch far, far away from here. And uh, I'd rather play music. You get shot at a lot less. Here's the million dollar question for you, Pustulus. If you could be president of the USA, how would you run it? Oh, that's amazingly simple. For one, you know, I would stop the lies because I would have nothing to hide. Uh, you know, I would legalize abortion. Hell, I would make abortion mandatory <laughs> for everyone. I would also, I would make sure I put more guns in our schools. You know, I'd legalize narcotics with an extremely heavy tax. You know, I've legalized murder. I would, uh, I would legalize vigilante justice. And, uh, you know, and then there's the day pass. The day pass is an idea I cultivated many moons ago, which is you could petition your governor or city locality that you live in, and you could get a day pass to just commit, you know, whatever multiple crimes that you want. Uh, mostly people are getting a day pass so they can drink and drive. You know, if you get pulled over and the cop comes to the window and says, so, Excuse me, sir, have you had anything to drink tonight? You say, oh, yeah, I've had a lot, but no, I've got a day pass. It's cool. <laughs> uh, Postless Maximus for the next presidential candidate in my book. Right there you go. <laughs> uh, I know you guys get this a lot, but even the meet and greets and things like that, what's it mean to you guys when fans come up to tell you that Guar's music has helped them through a, a tough time where it's pulled them through a bad experience or just let them get away from the everyday bullshit that we go through, Postless? What, what's that mean to you, man? I try to figure out what the hell is wrong with them that they are <laughs> so reliant on our music. You know, what? <laughs> there's probably some deep-seated emotional issues there. And uh, quite frankly, that's a, that's a good fan base to have. There's nothing better than flashing a bunch of strobe lights at people with irrational thoughts and fears. You know, and, and the gore crowd is perfect for that. And plus, you know, I think it's, uh, I think the fans of this band are also a lot more fearless and unafraid to speak their minds or to even subject themselves to our horrible cruelty. You know, I, other bands don't allow you to think for yourselves. There are Guar fans that are offended by some of the things we do. And there are some Guar fans that can't be offended by anything. And those are the real true Bohabs. And uh, I'm sure a fan of Nickelback could probably be easily offended. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I just like to say, as a fan of you guys for a very long time, thank you for continuing on, and uh, thanks for the crazy ass music, my friend. Well, the pleasure is all yours. Hey, before I let you go, would you care to do a promo for the show? Sure. This is Pustulus Maximus from Guar, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody, stick around. We got some great, great music coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Uber City Radio. Please go out and get Guar's The Blood of Gods coming out on October the 20th on Metal Blade Records. You'll never, never uh, listen to any better music than Guar's. Thank you so much, Postless. Thank you.